Welcome, demigods. You're listening to Ranking Rick Riordan, a podcast about Percy Jackson and the whole wide rest of the Riordan verse. I'm Dan. I'm Olga, and today we're casting the gods for Disney Plus's Percy Jackson TV series. And speaking of casting, if somehow you didn't know, they have officially cast Percy himself as Walker Scoble for the series. We did a whole reaction talky thing about that last week. So we'll, we'll put a card up for you guys if you want to check that out. But that's really exciting. And now we're going to talk about other casting. We know that Annabeth and Grover casting is basically imminent. I'm expecting it within like a month based on things that Rick has said. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's sooner even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're just starting to look into the adult characters. So today we wanted to look back at our casting video from last year. And really look over the gods we cast then, but also just fan cast all of the gods, whether they show up in Lightning Thief or not. Um, we wanted to talk about the gods. But before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. If you are usually an audio podcast listener currently listening to this on audio podcast services, I recommend going over to our YouTube channel for this one because I've done a lot of graphics work going to have a lot of images of the various people we're talking about showing how they look similar to images of the books and stuff. So definitely recommend checking that out at youtube.com slash doing okay. That's D-O-I-N-G-O-K. And if you are a YouTube person right now viewing this and maybe you you don't know who the heck we are, we are a podcast that's semi-weekly that we talk about Rick Riordan books. We talk about ranking Percy Jackson against Kane Chronicles, against uh, Magnus Chase and all that stuff. So we recommend checking us out over on the podcast services and they also post here on YouTube. All that being said, Let's talk God casting. So we wanted to do a second look over all of the gods. And uh, as a reminder, in case you didn't watch that first video, we're ga- going for realistic-ish picks, picks that might actually happen. So we're aiming for like a potential Disney connection because Disney likes to work with some of the same people. Also, we're looking for mainly TV-ish actors. We're going to probably break that rule quite a bit. But we're trying to not just be like Chris Pratt and, you know, I don't know, the, the biggest... I mean, Robert Chris Pratt Downey is in everything, yeah. right? Now, <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> like, we're trying not to just go with the most obvious pick. Like, so we're going for people that might actually take a minor role in a kid's show on Disney+, Plus. <laughs> is what it comes down to. All right, so uh, we're going to start with the five gods that we hit on last time with some new ideas and also discussing some ideas that we got from people in the comments and popular fan casting ideas. So we're starting with Zeus. Do you want to read the snippet I have? Yes. In the books, Zeus is very tall and muscular with shoulder length black hair and a gray and black neatly trimmed beard. Zeus is proud, stubborn, and short tempered. So last time our picks were Anthony Starr from The Boys. He plays Homelander and D.B. Woodside from Lucifer. Um, and I'm just going to say right off the bat. Uh, We will be including some race bending because the gods don't have DNA, can look however they want, whenever they want, at whatever time. And therefore wouldn't affect how their kids look. Yes. So, you know, we had a lot of back and forth of that in the comments for the last video, and I definitely agree. They can look however they want to look. So we're going to go forward with that. Um, But our first new idea, because I will say I still stick by, uh, I definitely stick by these first two. Yeah. I still see them uh, yeah. as somewhat realistic. Although Anthony Starr has had some legal trouble, so I don't know about that. But <laughs> yeah. Um, Jude Law is our first pick. Here he is 49. He is best known probably for Sherlock Holmes. Also, he's in Captain Marvel, Disney Connection, and also Peter Pan and Wendy. He's about to be in as Captain Hook, another Disney Connection. Thoughts about Jude Law? I see it. I mean, he has that gravitas. Mm. He has uh, those piercing eyes. (laughs) Uh, And I think that this is the right size role that he I could see him agreeing to. It's not a huge commitment, but it will be enough that, you know, parents will be excited to see him if they watch with their kids. Older, uh, you know, people who read these books when they were kids and are no longer kids, kind of like us. uh, We have a lot of connections to him. And I think he just fits this kind of role yeah i feel like jude law has like a grandiose nature and i can see him being a bit of a jerk you know he played a villain in captain marvel and i think he has you know that zeus sort of like arrogance to him that he can play for sure Mm -hmm. um 
And he is a bigger name, but also Zeus is the bigger names of the, of the God characters. Mm -hmm. so there's that. Our next pick is Jim Caviezel, who is 53. He is best known for person of interest and passion of the Christ. So he has uh, godly, <laughs> godly energy to him. Well, <laughs> this is your pick. Yes. So why don't you tell I don't know. It? He's very, um, you know, I haven't actually seen passion of the Christ. But I've seen Person of Interest, and I really like him in that. And he has a lot of, he has like a great gruffness to him. He looks good in a suit, which okay, is important. That is important. Zeus wears suits in this universe. And, he, you know, he has a good, he has a good uh, dark beard combination going on. And he has, you know, there's a, like I said, I, it's a little bit of a joke having the godliness to him. But like, yeah, he's played larger than life characters mm -hmm. that have a lot of like wisdom and intensity to them. Um, and so, yeah, when I think of Jim Caviezel, I think intense. And when I think of Zeus, I think intense. So that's yes. my pick there. And then I wanted to talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I have heard going around as a rumor. There's no like actual anything to it other than people want this. What do you think? Um, he's on the older side, <laughs> uh, the governator, yeah. as some might remember <laughs> yeah. from his political run. I mean, I see that rationale. <laughs> he was the head of California. Yeah. <laughs> How different is that from the Pantheon? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, he's 74. He's it, German, Austrian, excuse yeah. me. I don't know. I don't picture Zeus with a thick accent. I, I agree. He is on the older side. I, I would like the three brothers to be around the same age mm -hmm. even though again that doesn't necessarily matter matter but just like visually i'd like them to all be around the same looking egg mm -hmm. that said he definitely is imposing and he definitely i can see him with a grizzled gray and black beard and glowering down at people and little 12 year old percy wanting to like quaking in his boots over there <laughs> i just don't picture arnold as <laughs> Thalia's dad. <laughs> I don't know. I could sort of see it. Okay. Well, that, that's uh, we'll it's see what the, it's an interesting choice. We'll see if the rumors are yeah. true. Okay. I mean, there's no, there's they've already said there's nothing to the rumors, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't have heard the rumor and be like, hey, maybe that's a good idea. Is he available? <laughs> he seems pretty available. All of his <laughs> movies are not doing well anymore. I'm okay. sorry, boy. Whoa. <laughs> they're not. I mean, how many times can he try to play the Terminator in a failed movie? Um, but let's talk about Dionysus. Hmm. Why don't you read that? Mr. D. Mm -hmm. Dionysus has a chubby face, a red nose, and curly black hair. On the surface, he can be bitter and sarcastic, but deep down, like pretty deep down, <laughs> he's a good dude. Yeah. So we had had James Spader last time. 100% I, I still, stick by this I still one. love this one. I think he, he has that energy for sure. Um, but you also wanted Paul Giamatti, who's 54 best known i at least i wrote billions and jungle cruise for disney recent connection. disney connection mm -hmm. so that's great but why don't you talk about paul giamatti i mean he's got that like angry pent up just <laughs> below the surface uh, like snide bitter guy i yeah. mean uh for those who haven't seen the classic movie big fat liar <laughs> uh with frankie muniz i mean like that's that to me was more of a uh, slapstick kind of side of it but yeah. I mean to me that is still like a character type of like little guy trying to make a big impression yeah it, that that's Dionysus <laughs> I mean yeah. he doesn't want to be at at uh Camp Half-Blood and he's stuck yeah. with all these kids and he doesn't care about them yeah except but for like his kid does. yeah yeah <laughs> well so um let's talk about two big fan fan favorites mm -hmm. here that I see where they're coming from, but don't necessarily buy. Um, the first one is Danny DeVito. And the main reason I don't buy it, even though I understand definitely would have been great. He's 77. That is pretty old for, I is not how I picture Mr. D personally. No, I don't know. Danny DeVito. He looks 77. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that said he is in Dumbo and he's going to be in the haunted mansion movie. So those are both Disney connections. I wouldn't be shocked if this happened. I just think he's, 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 it's not, you're, when you picture the Danny DeVito you want to be Mr. D, you're picturing Danny DeVito from 20 years ago, I feel mm -hmm. like. But that's just me. Yeah. I, I that's who I'm picturing too. And yeah. I kind of feel like that ship has sailed. Yeah. Um, then the next big one that people talk about is Jack Black, 52, School of Rock, Goosebumps. So he's done kids' stuff for mm -hmm. sure. 
Um, my biggest question. So I think he's a, uh, honestly a very a really good, good option. Pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he has that buoyant energy. I can see him being sarcastic for sure and playing well off the kid actors and everything. Um, my biggest question is, would he do a TV role that's a recurring role that isn't prestige? Like, he's done, like, one, like, HBO series and stuff like that. I have trouble picturing him doing, he's such a big star, I can picture him doing, like, a one-episode thing, but Mr. D's actually, a, like, An a important somewhat important role. Character. Yeah, Yeah. that said, I could see them knocking out some of his scenes in, like, a week or two. Yeah. And him opening up his schedule for that. Um. I I see it happening. Yeah. He's he's done some really weird appearances yeah. and things like The Office. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's also very like active online and mm-hmm. he has um sons I think or at least mm-hmm. one son who uh very much grew up in like the time that he could have read yeah. uh Percy ja- Jackson and the Olympian. So like I could see him signing up for this because his kid liked them. Yeah. I think I think you're right and I, I my question though is he has to sign on for years. I, I you know? think he would. You think he would? Yeah, okay. he does weird recurring bits on Conan mm-hmm. and like things that require scheduling and, yeah. and all of that. The only thing with him is, and I haven't seen Goosebumps, where I do think playing Arl Stein, he was like a little bit more like mean yeah. at, and had to open up. I actually haven't seen him play a character who's like not friendly. Yeah. So he was kind of a. I don't know if I'd call him a, on community. He certainly wasn't likable. I'll give you that. <laughs> it was a different yeah. kind of not likable. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see. But I, I kind of hope this one happens. Yeah, I can see it for sure. I'm still on team James Spader. Yeah. But honestly, I don't know. James Spader is an interesting one, too, because I'm like, he's kind of a big deal, too. But he also is Mr. Blacklist, which is, you know, he's certainly open to long term TV roles. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely Jack Black's a good option. Let's talk about Hades. Yes, so Hades is tall with long black hair. Just so you know, guys, this friggin' light keeps changing color. We can't do anything about it. So if it turns green, that's what's going on. And if it's (laughs) green in one shot and blue in another, (laughs) there you've seen the magic of editing. Uh, Anyway, so Hades has the eyes of a genius or a madman. He looks more evil than he actually is. Hades is honorable and misunderstood. So last time we talked about Joseph Fiennes, who's 51 from Handmaid's Tale and a Mm -hmm. whole bunch of other stuff. And we were talking, we thought he looked really good because of how like devious he looked. And a lot of people commented being like, Hades is a good dude. He's not evil, blah, blah, blah. And that is true. And I don't know if we, if we spoke about it incorrectly, but what we really are saying is Hades should look stereotypically evil even though he isn't because the idea is especially in book one is oh he's obviously the villain but wait you shouldn't judge you know a book book by by its its cover cover. there's more to him um and that he yeah he looks they even say i mean they literally say in the book they talk about him being like a suicide bomber and like hitler (laughs) so you can't say he doesn't look evil He wears a cloak of, like, tormented souls. Yeah. This isn't supposed to be, like, Mr. Friendly Face. Yeah. <laughs> He's supposed to look scary, yeah. but at the end of the day, be a lot better and uh, more honorable and good than a lot of the other people yeah. who look less scary. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what are some of our options here? So we have, this is a... A big poll. A big poll. <laughs> um, Sebastian Stan, and given our negative description and his uh, stands online, this might be not something people are happy that we're saying. <laughs> well, but uh, he, he has an intensity to him he's, for sure. Okay, so for <laughs> those who need the reminder, yeah. he's uh, Mr. Winter Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Winter Soldier. <laughs> Mr. Buckyus Barnes. Yes, exactly. In uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And recently he played... Um, Tommy something and uh, Pam and Tommy. Yeah, he was in Pam and Tommy, which is a Hulu series, which is another Disney connection. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, again, that's more prestige. But I mean, Hades is a pretty cool character to play. He, again, very clearly has this Disney connection. He used to play Mad Hatter on Once Upon a Time. Yes. This light changes every five seconds. For I our... apologize. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, But again, I think he's a he's a outside the like he's not outside the box not outside of the box pick but outside the box as far as like that's probably not gonna happen yeah i i think he could really bring that intensity to it and also 
I mean, the kind heartedness too. And also like a bit of the humor. Yes. You know, like yeah. he has that, like the kind of humor he has as Winter Soldier, I mm-hmm. think could work pretty well for Hades, which does have some humorous moments for yeah. sure with him complaining about stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like, come on. Yeah. You can picture <laughs> Sebastian Stan complaining about bureaucracy. I mean, we kind of <laughs> got that in Falcon yeah. and Will- Winter Soldier too. So I would love it, but I have a, another, I'd say one that's a little bit more likely, more more possible i guess Mm -hmm. is nestor carbonell 54 right now known i'd say maybe most for the morning show but also was uh richard and lost Mm -hmm. uh another disney connection there and then abc's disney yeah and then he's also in the big hero six uh series, series which is again another disney connection um he just has i mean he was literally playing an immortal in lost and i feel like yeah he definitely has that like He's he's old, but he's like kind of timeless in this mm-hmm. weird way, and he he kind of just looks like he's dead. <laughs> no offense to uh, him. <laughs> I'm gonna say a nice thing about him uh, that is def- he's also handsome, he, even though there we go. he's deadly handsome. <laughs> <laughs> he just again he has these like piercing eyes, yeah, and they're just like very uh, dark rimmed. I think it's like, I remember reading an article from his lost days where people were mm-hmm. like, are you wearing eyeliner? And mm-hmm. he's like, no, it's my <laughs> eyelashes. And yeah. they're, but the point is that they're very vivid. And that's yeah. such an important part of Hades description with yeah. his eyes and his stare that I think that you need someone who can like stare into the soul of our yeah. trio and freak them out. <laughs> it is the right level of like unnerving, but still charismatic. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, I, I just, I think we really great. like it. Yeah. Um, and then the big one people talk about is Tom Ellis, who plays Lucifer in Lucifer. Probably the single most frequent name that appeared in the comment section yeah. of our first casting video. And I get it, but yeah. personally, I don't like it. Um, I I just think it's too on the nose, and I would feel like suddenly Lucifer is in Percy Jackson. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't think Lucifer is Hades. Right. Um. Not to say he couldn't, you know, do a slight variation. Obviously, he he even played slight variations like of himself. Like an evil twin of himself, yeah. yeah. But I, I would find it distracting, personally. I also don't see Tom Ellis necessarily agreeing to, to do, do another god of the underworld, so to speak. Yeah. Like, I don't think he would want to be pigeonholed as that kind of character. Yeah, it feels like, how do you not get typecast at that point? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we like him. We like Lucifer, but... It's not our favorite. Yeah, I, I certainly for Hades. certainly would be interested to see him do it, but it's not not where I would go personally. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have Ares, who is kind of our big bad of the series, or at least season the one. Season one, yeah. yes. Ares is a huge, muscular man and a, with a belligerent attitude and vicious sneer. Urgh. As the god of war, he is impetuous and violent, and we sort of see him as like a biker dude. Yeah. In season one, or what will be season one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we had picked Travis Femel last time from Vikings and Raised by Wolves. Definitely has that, like, intensity yeah. and size and action chops. To yes, definitely a lot of fighting chops. Yeah. Now, uh, this, again, I think is a bit, I don't believe it would happen. I really didn't do a good job of being realistic this time <laughs> around. But, hey, I gave. I also gave realistic options in addition yeah. to my fun ones. I picture Carl Urban when I read this. That's my my feeling it, it, from the boys, but also Thor Ragnarok, Disney connection. He has a lot of Star Trek. You know, he's done a ton of stuff. Yeah. Doug Dredd. He can certainly play an intimidating guy. Seeing mm-hmm. him play against children would be pretty funny, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he, again, has the sense of humor that I think Ares yeah. also needs. Like, can we laugh or is he going to hurt us yeah. <laughs> kind of thing? that. That really is a character that Carl Urban would do well with. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, pre The Boys, I would say this is a realistic option because I think that he certainly was in that spot. Now that he's in The Boys, I feel like he's seen as more prestige. And so I don't know. But again, Ares is only like a couple days of filming, probably. Like, it's not that much, uh, you know, investment. But again, it's also a few seasons, potentially. So. Right. 
We'll see. We'll see. I mean, the boys might not be around for that much longer, depending on how much story they have. I don't left, know. So. Amazon's going to milk that cow until it's dry. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, the point is that I would see him trying to diversify some of his roles as yeah. well by working with like a family friendly show and yeah. still being the villain of it. Yeah, I feel like he'd have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and then our next pick is Alan Richson. Richson. Yes. Who is Reacher on Reacher. And he is also on Amazon. <laughs> Another cow I think they're going to milk for a yeah. while, actually. He's also from Titans. He is quite a large human. That's like a recurring joke in yeah. Reacher where they're like, how much milk did you have <laughs> as a child that made you like seven feet tall or yeah. And- he, he is intimidating. He, I mean, he's like, really intimidating looking. Definitely, I see the God of War in him. My one question is, can he play a villain? Which he probably can. I just, I, he's so like lovable teddy bear in Reacher that. But again, it's an intimidating yeah. teddy bear. <laughs> like he, yeah. he is funny. He could make jokes, but. Are we allowed to laugh at them or <laughs> will our head be removed from our body? Uh, <laughs> so I, I, again, I think that this would be something that I would like to see him yeah. do. And I don't think this one is outside the realm of possibility. No, he hasn't been yeah. in that many things. Yeah. And Reacher, even though it's fun, it's not really prestige. Yeah. All right. Now Poseidon. This is a big one. Mm-hmm. Poseidon is handsome and powerful, yet gentle. He has black hair and a neatly trimmed black beard. He's described as chill, but prideful and a little temperamental, like the sea. Like the sea. Yes. Um, our pick last time was Sean McGuire from Once Upon a Time. He played Robin Hood. He's also been in some other stuff. Definitely still feel still like see that. he has, you know, a good look for it and everything. But we have a few more options, and then we're going to talk about Logan Learman. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll get there, folks. Actually, um, that's probably the single most common oh, comment yeah. from, from that video, yeah. the first casting one. Yeah. The first thing I have here is Milo Ventimiglia. Ventimiglia? I don't know. He is best known at this point for This Is Us, but also Gilmore Girls, Heroes. He's been around the TV block. Mm-hmm. But right now, he's known for playing... A dad, a, 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 a kind, st- loving, a dad. loving dad that also has his demons. And I'm just like, mm. I don't know. I just think that he would be such a awesome option. He has like such a good mixture of lovable, but there's something a little bit off in there. Yeah. Um, And I think he'd play, you know, a great dad to Percy. Um, I think he's a good age for it at 44. That's around the age that I personally would want the character to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I just think he has the look, he has the background, he's a TV guy. Yes. This is us is I think ending. Yes. So it is. I'm sure he'll have plenty of other options, but I think this is a great one. Again, not a huge time commitment for him. He can follow through with other projects as well and yeah. just be a recurring character in yeah. Percy Jackson. But also he's just someone who again would appeal to lots of people and in different ways because of Mm. his many tv roles and be that connecting point for people to like be excited to see him appear he's a name but not a name that costs money yeah and i think that that's a very good sweet spot i think they need those for for a tv show (laughs) yeah Yeah. next one i have is a little bit outside the box is ral coley from i zombie midnight mass and now he's just one of the Midnight Mask guys, those little pets that he brings from project to project. <laughs> yeah. Horror movie. Yeah. Woo. yeah. Um, I just think, again, very lovable guy. Very, um, very funny in iZombie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also feel like he definitely has intensity to him on Midnight Mass. Yeah. I think it's an outside the box option, but I, I see I can see him being the the sea god, you know? Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. He really knows how to monologue. Mm-hmm. He has that charm. He has that wit. He yeah. has the dark hair with like salt and pepper <laughs> yeah. in it, even though he's only 36. Yeah. He's already looks a little grizzled as yeah. he makes fun of himself on Twitter a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, I I really would like to see this. I think it's the right size kind of role for him too and i would love for him to get more disney connections because then he could be in lots more stuff yeah i just he just deserves it so much yeah and he's just uh, he's also if you follow him on twitter he's just an awesome awesome dude yeah seriously definitely a fan yeah so let's talk about logan learman i know that's why everyone (laughs) actually clicked on this video (laughs) and what they've already written in the comments even before we probably got our intro out okay we know yes so Logan Learman, if you don't know somehow, he played Percy in the old movies. 
Um, and a lot of people, even those that don't like the movies, liked him in the movies. Mm -hmm. We are not in that camp, <laughs> personally Let's speaking. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> um, and I I'll just explain. I mean, like, if you want him, I get it. It's fun. That's just, at the end of the day, it's like, if you think that he deserved more, if you like the legacy there, a lot of people grew up with him as Percy. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I get it. You want to see him again, and you want that connection to a thing from your childhood. And I've seen the pictures of him with his salt and pepper hair. He's looking kind of like the drawing of him. He's still only 30, and I, I get people are like, oh, he looks like he could be old enough. And obviously, again, Poseidon can look however he wants to look. Personally, I want on screen the character to look like a father. And I still feel like Logan Learman looks like a big brother. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just me. But I have a more in-depth explanation here. So if I were Disney, I'd want to distance myself as much as possible from those movies. Whether you like them or not, they failed both critically and financially. And there's, there's no arguing that. If they wasn't successful financially, there would have been a third one. Mm -hmm. If you look at Rotten Tomatoes, definitely failed critically. <laughs> um, why would Disney want to pay homage to films that tainted the very IP they're trying to resurrect? I mean, I, I heard people on a podcast I was listening to talking about Disney Plus, and they heard that this was coming. And they're not Percy Jackson fans. And their reaction was, oh, didn't they try that already? Like, the average person, if you're not a fan, is like, oh, yeah, that thing that wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know. you What they actually want is for this to be a huge success because yeah. there's so many books in the Riordan verse. Yeah. There's so much territory that they can mine mm -hmm. and, you know, profit off of, which yeah. is, at the end of the day, what companies really care about, yeah. <laughs> um, that they want this to be like something people tune in for. And if they hear that it's really good, they're going to probably want to watch it even if they don't know about the books or haven't read them in a long time. Yeah. And if they hear, hey, the guy from the not successful movies is yeah. here, it could cause a lot of confusion about, wait, so is it a continuation yeah. of something that wasn't very good? Yeah, especially if you're not someone who is in the know, you might be like, oh, are they bringing back that thing? Is it a revival? Like, yeah, yeah it, reboot. Like, and it, you don't want the biggest news story to be about the old movies. Mm -hmm. that, that's my feeling. Do you want to read this one, this post from? Yeah. yeah. So in a recent blog post, uh, Rick wrote, there were some very fine actors in those movies whom I feel terrible for because they had to be associated with those <laughs> movies. I would never ask them to revisit that nightmare, especially when so many have gone on to wonderful, successful careers. Also, the whole point of the PJO TV show, that's what it, yeah, yeah <laughs> is to do it fresh. Do it anew from square one. So he's kind of, he seems like he's in. He sounds like he's debunking those rumors. Uh, yeah. I mean, that said, he's not the only one to make the decisions. That's and, true. And if Disney thinks people want it, maybe Disney will do it. Yeah. But we'll see. We will yeah. see. And I mean, I've seen him in Hunters. Mm -hmm. He's doing prestige stuff. He yeah. is a good actor. People like him. It's just, for us, not our favorite. Yeah. I, at the same time, if Poseidon doesn't require that much screen time, I could see him doing it for the fans, but... I could see yeah. him being, like, a cameo of the one who wooed Sally Jackson, yeah. you know, 12 years ago, mm. but... I don't know if they, if, yeah, again, if the gods can, role. yeah, if the gods can change their appearance, maybe he looks a little bit older and it's a different <laughs> actor. Yeah. All right. That naturally brings us to Alexander Daddario, who played uh, Annabeth in the old movies and who a lot of people want to play Athena. At 36, I think he can handle the parent thing better than Logan can. And I think he's an okay Athena pick. At the end of the day, I, it's the same reasons I don't think they'd want to associate themselves and if I were going to make uh, Alexandra Daddario a goddess, it would not be Athena. It would definitely be Aphrodite. Yeah. Because look at her. <laughs> <laughs> She's really uh, uh, beautiful. Like, She's really like, attractive. <laughs> she is, like, peak attractive. Yeah. So uh, that would be a distracting Athena to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But... Let's talk about Athena Wouldn't overall. she be a distracting <laughs> Aphrodite, too? <laughs> but the right kind of distracting. <laughs> All right. So, right. Athena, she yes. is beautiful and regal. Also somewhat scary. I mean, Alexandra Daddario could be that. Yeah. But 
Yeah. You know. All right. So she's brilliant, fierce, and disciplined. Again, I think she could be a good pick. I just. Again, yeah. It, it, yeah. association with not successful movies. Yeah. See Logan Learman part minute earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so my first pick is Deacon Lockman, who is currently probably best known for being on Severance, but was also a voice in Raya and the Last Dragon, Disney Connection. And she was on a record, recurring role in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Again, ABC. Disney Connection. Yes. Um, she is a TV actress. Mm -hmm. um, she has intensity up the wazoo. Yes. <laughs> she knows how to do fight choreography, as we've yeah. seen in The 100 and, and uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. too. Yeah. So, you know, if we get to see Athena in battle, yeah. that would be really cool. Uh, I think she was also an Altered Carbon, probably yeah. doing action stuff. She She's just like, a cool badass person who's done a ton of TV is always kind of popping up here and there, not quite getting her due in my no, opinion. No, definitely not. Um, and so I think she def definitely like, she looks wise. She looks like a warrior. I mean, I just think, look at who she played in the hundred and mm -hmm. it's like, she'd be a good Athena. Yes, definitely. Um, next up, we have Kerry Russell, best known for the Americans and now star Wars episode nine. Even Again. though she was helmeted the whole yes. time. <laughs> About Disney connection. There we go. Uh, Want to talk about Carrie Russell for me? Yeah. I mean, again, coming back to it, intensity, seriousness, beauty, fight choreography yeah. <laughs> from the Americans. Yeah. Like, she really knows how to hold her own. She is maternal mm -hmm. in, in many of these roles and, yeah. like, cares about people. She is, again, a TV actress. Yeah. I mean, she does have movie roles yeah. and does that, but she's, like, best known for being in like Felicity yeah. as well. And uh, again, another person who I think people would be excited to see in a role yeah. of a show like this. And I think that she's the kind of mom she plays in the Americans is the right kind of mom where mm -hmm. she's, she cares about her kid. She wants to be a good mom. She doesn't really know how to do that though, because of who she is. Yeah. And she just is trying to get the best out of them. And sometimes the best isn't good enough. And uh, she just like, <laughs> Wants wants them to be competitive with other demigods yeah. <laughs> and, yep. and just like be better. Yeah. And I, that's kind of something I see from Athena's kids. Yeah. All right. Moving on to Aphrodite. As the personification of beauty, Aphrodite's true appearance is actually unknown as she appears to others as their personal epitome of physical attraction. For this reason, I believe she should be played by multiple actresses providing fun cameos. And Dan went a bit less realistic with this list yes. because of we the went cameo for nature. Who would be the starlets to pick? Yes. To have like half a scene just in and out, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this is something a lot of people talked about in the comments too, that it would be really cool to have a bunch of different actresses play her. Yeah. So first, the first big one is Zendaya. Obviously, big deal. Euphoria. Spider-Man, so she does have a Disney connection, plus Casey Undercover, her Disney Disney roots. show. Mm -hmm. um, so I I have a trouble seeing her doing this at this point. But, but it's fun to it say. It would be cool. Yeah. Um, then Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones, Naomi Scott from Aladdin, uh, Lana Condor from To All the Boys, just getting all the super hot people. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is that to Percy, she looks like someone that he had a crush on from a show that he watched when he was like, you know, or the previous year mm -hmm. or two. So yeah. these are actresses who are kind of like in their 20s or yep. starlets. And I could see a 12 year old kid really crushing on them. Yeah. And then uh, for those of you who out there who will say, well, she should look like Annabeth because mm -hmm. she, she has reminds a crush of Annabeth. Annabeth. So I get yeah. that. So we have a few choices within that zone. One is Chloe Grace from Moretz from Kick Ass, If I Stay, Adam's Family. She's also kind of in a interesting spot in her career where mm -hmm. i can picture her doing this yeah. um i feel like she is a name but not as big as you'd expect her to be at, from where she started yeah um i can certainly see it another big one right now again euphoria sydney sweeney um white lotus she's definitely on the rise right now mm -hmm. beautiful actress has that blonde hair the annabeth look mm -hmm. and then uh katherine newton um from detective pikachu and she's about to be an ant-man and the wasp Quantum Mania. So Disney big there. Disney connection yeah. there. Definitely the right, I think the right age, the right look. Definitely could see her having played Annabeth when she was younger. Um, yeah. yeah. And she has that intimidation factor that we saw in Freaky. Yeah. <laughs> Very good <laughs> yes. point there. All right. Apollo. 
Apollo is extremely handsome, mm. being as muscular and bronzed as a Baywatch lifeguard, 90s reference, <laughs> with golden hair and eyes that shine like the sun. He's cocky and kind of dopey. Dopey dope. Yes. So we have a few different options here. Uh, my first one is Ross Lynch, mm -hmm. who is from Killing Adventures of Sabrina and Austin and Allie, which is Disney a Disney show. show. So he has the Disney connection. He can sing. He's a Disney boy. He is athletic, athletic, right age ish because he's supposed to look pretty young. He's younger than a lot of the middle. He doesn't appear as a middle aged man. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe he's even a little too old for Apollo, I guess you could argue. But I think he can. he's been playing a teenager up until a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think that he definitely has the right. You know, the fact that he even has the musical side on top of it and he that, plays kind of a dopey character. Yeah. Um, yeah. It really works. Yeah. Uh, we also have Sam Corlett from Chilling Ad Ad Adventures <laughs> of Sabrina as well and recently Vikings Valhalla. Yeah. He is definitely godly. <laughs> <laughs> Again, athletic. Yeah. He has handsome. The, he has the body and the and the beauty to make it happen. Yes. And he played a super dumb dummy in um and uh Killing Adventures of yeah. Sabrina. Uh, not to say, uh, look, Apollo isn't just a dummy. No. But he he has to have that comedic he, sort of yeah. head in the air, arrogant thing. And if we're talking of Trials of Apollo way down the line, yeah. maybe it's time to set up an actor for that, too. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, I feel like you'd probably pick someone different for uh, Lester. You have to but, pick someone yeah. different for Lester. But for the beginning and yeah. ending. But for, yeah, when I in the flashbacks or whatever, yeah. I think that, honestly, Sam Carlett would be really really good the character that he played as caliban in killing adventure sabrina just make him nicer and he's basically the right person yeah right? like but he, he doesn't have to be that much yeah. nicer <laughs> he's, either he's funny he's hot he's arrogant yeah it all works he's it, dumb. it really does yeah. <laughs> our last pick is darren barnett from never have i ever paxton hall yoshida um Again, playing Very a attractive. hot dummy. <laughs> He's more than just a dummy, though, yes. as we learn yes. and Never Have I Ever. But just yeah. much like Apollo. Is more there you than go. Just a dummy. Yes. Yeah. I think these are three solid picks yeah. of eye candy. Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we agree. All right. Hermes. Yeah. So Hermes resembles a middle aged man with an athletic figure, elfish features, and a sly grin. He's a likable trickster. And he's kind of more of a runner guy. Yeah. Gotta be everywhere at once. Yep. Yeah. Um, this is another one where I like all of our picks a lot. Mm -hmm. First one is Alan Tudyk. Uh so many Disney yeah. connections. Can we really tons of Disney connections? Every every Pixar yeah. Disney voice. Yeah. Lots of Rogue things. Rogue One, yeah. Racket it Ralph, Firefly. He, on and on. He has, he would be great. He's such a charmer. Yeah, he's 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 funny. He's the right age range. I can picture him being Luke's dad. He can be serious yeah. too and have that like heartbreak behind his yeah. eyes. Yeah, I can, I just picture him. He's elfish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of again kind of what I picture when I read the book. Yeah, I um, see that. And Next then one, Randall Park. Yes, Wandavision lately. Very popular Disney connection. Yeah, um, Ant Man, all that stuff. Um, he's been in tons of stuff. He again, very funny, very likable. Um, can picture him playing a dad that you know is sort of struggling with his kid and all that. Yeah. So. And then I this I don't even know do I like this better or less than Alan Tudyk? I don't know. Bob Odenkirk from Better Call Saul, Nobody, and The Incredibles too. Disney connection. Mm -hmm. He just. I mean, he just got in shape, so it's like yes. totally he's the the old man runner. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, for nobody, which yeah. was like an action movie. And he's just hilarious and such a good dramatic actor on Very, top of it. Fantastic dramatic actor. So you see him at first, and he's just like, oh yeah, he's a trickster. He yeah. play, he's like con artist sometimes yeah. in uh, Better Call Saul, yeah. and then. And then he... that's a great point with the thievery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he's not a nice guy, but he's a nice guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I can picture him running around delivering mail, arguing with snakes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he has a pole, and he's just like, oh, these two coworkers of mine. Oh. I love all three of our yeah. picks here. I don't think there's a stinker in the bunch. <laughs> All right, next up is Demeter. She is a simple, dignified beauty. She is warm, loving, somewhat fussy, and has overprotective maternal instincts. I'd love to meet her. Wow. Dumb to eat her. No. Um, we only have one thing for this, and that is Katherine Hahn from WandaVision and 
uh, Parks and Rec mm-hmm. and all those lovely things. She's going to have her own Disney Plus show as a WandaVision spinoff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like she just feels right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's got the right energy. And I mean, we're not going to see Demeter ass- yeah. like alone without the Pantheon for quite a while. Yeah. Um, I just think she has the right kind of vibe and humor, especially for the Persephone stuff that we got mm-hmm. later on. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's just really funny. I think it'd be great to have her. Yeah. All right. Artemis. Yes. So Artemis presents as a girl of around 12. She's powerful and athletic with dark hair. Artemis is preserved, caring, and deadly. Like you. Aww. <laughs> All right, so we have two different options here. The first one is Abby Ryder Fortson, who played uh, the daughter in Ant-Man and Ant-Man 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier, we had Catherine Newton, who's playing the grown-up version of her. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have Ant-Man daughter number one. A lot of Ant-Man love, but <laughs> Paul Rudd is nowhere on this list. <laughs> um, so she's just, she's the right age, I think. She's the right look. She has a Disney connection. Mm-hmm. She needs a new Disney connection. Um, and I just think she she was just, she nailed her work in those movies. So. Yes, yeah. definitely. And speaking of an additional Disney connection, <laughs> next up on our potentials list is Ever Anderson. Mm-hmm. So she's 14. She was in Black Widow. As the young Black uh, Widow. As the young Black Widow, as a yeah. young Natasha Romanoff. And yeah. she did such a good job in that movie. Yeah. And she's going to be playing Wendy in their Peter Pan and Wendy movie that's mm-hmm. coming to Disney+. Plus. Um, she is the daughter of Paul W.S. Anderson and uh, Mila Jovovich. Jovovich. Mm-hmm. Um, so she has a lot of Hollywood uh, pull right now. She's yeah. certainly going to end up being part, someone we see a lot, I think. Mm-hmm. By the time Artemis comes around, maybe she'll be a little too old. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if she was an Annabeth pick um that'd be pretty cool yeah we'll see i also just wanted to throw out there i didn't write it down here but we had said for annabeth in the last video brooklyn prince um and i think she'd be a great artemis too Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of great awesome just badass young ladies that can play that role absolutely in her heyday they could have gotten um well the girl who's playing ellie now in last of us oh yes (laughs) of game of thrones bear island liana mormon yeah Actress, yeah, yeah, she was intense. <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely Artemis like. Yes. All right, Hephaestus. <laughs> okay, Hephaestus is a huge lump of a man. <laughs> it's the nicest way of putting it. <laughs> Rick's words, not ours. <laughs> With bushy eyebrows and a wild brown beard, Hephaestus is gruff, cynical, and deeply intelligent. Well, uh, going off of our Black Widow riff, mm-hmm. we have David Harbour, who is a Black, in Black Widow, Disney Connection, but most well known for Stranger Things. Yes. Um, you know, known for playing a gruff, surly dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to see him playing off of Leo someday. Down I know. There. <laughs> so that's something I, I do yeah. keep in mind because yeah. I feel like there's no discussion about um, the gods changing their appearances aside from Aphrodite, mm-hmm. um, who's not really changing it so much as like shifting based yeah. on the eye of the beholder. But um, yeah, so in theory, we're not just casting for, for just this now. show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he's he would be great. Definitely still isn't like such a big star that I couldn't see him doing it. Hephaestus is I, a pretty small role, though. It is a small yeah. role, and I actually think David Harbour is too big since then might actually be borderline too big mm. because he's now like a movie star yeah. he isn't just you know mr yeah. tv uh, I, I, don't I don't know he was a minor i mean he wasn't really minor role but he was a side role i don't know how much more we're going to see him in the mcu necessarily but we'll see we'll see he was also hellboy yes you know <laughs> big hit a hell of a guy <laughs> and then the one that i think is like my personal favorite pick is kadeem hardison who I know and love from Teenage Bounty Hunter. Yeah. Rest in peace, Matt. Beautiful television series. Netflix, how could you? <laughs> um, and also has a Casey Undercover connection. So Disney. There we go. Yeah. Also, he's known for a different world for the old timers out there like him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, do you want to talk about him? Yeah. I mean, he again has that gruff exterior. He doesn't want to open up to people. Yeah. But. He's like really smart and capable. And then, you know, once you 
break through to his soft mushy inside. He mm-hmm. he's really good at playing a character like yeah. that. That's what he does in Teenage Bounty Hunters. He's just, and he's just so likable and that's what you want yeah. for Hephaestus. Someone who's very he's plays someone very put upon, very grumbly and yeah. past his prime and, and rah, underappreciated yeah. and but uh and very, you know, quippy in an angry way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he's going to be there for you when you need him to make an automaton. <laughs> I could see him with the workshop. Yeah, yes. for sure. All right. You want to go with Hera, All right, our last, last one. But not least, then don't let her think she's least. that she's least. I actually, I think I put her last so that we ended on a high note. Okay. Oh, there right? we go. Queen. Hello. Let's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So Hera is a regal, unapproachable beauty with dark hair. She is described as a strong, controlling perfectionist. For sure, a perfectionist. Also, I never said I got all these descriptions and things from the wiki, which is mostly drawing directly from the books. Yeah. But it was just an easy, quick way to find mm-hmm. stuff like that. So our first option, um, Elizabeth Mitchell, mm-hmm. best known, I would say, for Lost, but also in Once Upon, Once a, Upon a, Time, a Time. And she's going to be in the Santa Claus TV show because she was Mrs. Claus in the Santa Claus. But the Santa Claus TV show is a Disney Plus show. So straight up Disney Plus connect. Right. Um. I Mrs. Love her. Claus, Mrs. Zeus, <laughs> <Yeah>. same deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this totally is, I feel like, in her wheelhouse of mm-hmm. where she's at in her career. Yeah. A little, you know, not a huge commitment, but a memorable role mm-hmm. when she pops up there. She definitely has, she's played a mother in so many things. Yeah. She has a regality to her. She's Mrs. Claus. So, yeah. So, like, yeah. regal, you know? Clearly. <laughs> Queen of the North Pole. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she's she has that intensity. She could mm-hmm. stare you down. She's the mother you don't want to disappoint. Yeah, I think that's I think she really works. Yeah, I think she's got that that scare factor while also having a sweet factor. Yes. Yeah. And a smart factor. I yes, think is absolutely. Yeah. She's got to be scheming and a wily. Sc- yes. <laughs> I said scheming and a screaming, but that, that's that's much. <laughs> scheming and a screaming. <laughs> that's her, <up, laughs> I guess. <laughs> and then our second pick is Adina Porter mm-hmm. from The Hundred, American Horror Story, and Outer Banks, apparently. I didn't know she was in that. I didn't either. Uh, she's been in a lot of things here and there. The Hundred is the thing we know her from. Yes. She plays a maternal warrior figure. Yes. And I mean, obviously, Hera is more of a like uh, plan maker, but yep. we saw her character in The Hundred doing that too yeah. and pulling the strings and understanding consequences. And I think she could really hold her own against like any Zeus character. Yeah. She's very queenly. Yes. And Again, very, very regal. Yeah. It, it's a different take, I think, but I think it's an interesting take for sure. Absolutely. Um, I, I think that there is an argument that I would go maybe towards Elizabeth Mitchell because I think there's like a, a wasp element to the character mm-hmm. in the way that she's presented in the books. But I think Adina Porter definitely has that intimidation and like the yeah the mother you do not want to cross. <laughs> and that mm-hmm. could totally be cool too. Yeah. 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 And, and again, it's she's not just a mother to like, or, you know, grandmother-esque kind of figure to her mm. demigod, she has to be important with the gods themselves, yeah. like, fearing her and really not really, really yeah. not really mm. wanting to, like, get their mother's ire. And that's yeah. the thing that I could really see from Adina Porter, mm-hmm. that she could, even with all these, like, big, incredible actors yeah. who we've called out for their, like, various, like, large charms, yeah. I could see her staring down Yep. Steering them down during the Pantheon scene and them quieting down until yep. she's done talking. Yep. And she'd be awesome Juno, especially. I oh, think. yes. Yeah. I Once again, I have to keep thinking <laughs> about the long-term <laughs> implications of yep. these characters. Yeah, I wonder whether, just as a side thing, I wonder whether they'll change the actors for their Roman aspects if we ever get there or not. Maybe, but, but I could see that not necessarily being how they advertise things yeah. to some of the actors yeah. of like, if you sign up for a cameo now, you're going to get a bigger yeah. cut of the pie later. Yeah. I, and I could see them also just like messing with their hair, makeup or whatever. Yeah, that's what I've been picturing. Yeah. But yeah. you never know. And I mean, unfortunately, that's kind of a long way off. Yeah. I mean, we have to be very lucky to ever see lot Heroes of Olympus. So. I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'm hopeful yeah. that the Percy Jackson TV show is going to get five strong seasons. Mm-hmm. And then Heroes of Olympus, here we come. Yeah, I really hope so. 
So those are our thoughts, our uh, picks for the various Olympian gods plus Hades. <laughs> um, got a, our honorary Olympian. Yes. Um, and so let us know what you guys think in the comments below or by emailing us at our podcast feedback at gmail.com. Leave us a review for the podcast on podcast services. And thank you guys so much for everything. Let us know what you'd like us to cast in the future. I think we are going to do Magnus Case at some point. Definitely, yeah. especially since those books are something that we just finished reading. Yeah. Podcast imminent. Yes. All right, guys. Thank you for everything. And may the gods be ever in your favor. Bye-bye.